All right, let's see if I can do this in under four minutes. These are four books to read if you want narrative philosophy or if you want to approach philosophy with a little bit of story to help it sink in. Uh, this is what I've been reading, at least for right now, in 2024. The first book is a biography of Hadrian, Emperor Hadrian from the Roman Empire by Anthony Everett. Um, this book was wild. I did not expect uh, to sort of see the world that Anthony Everett put together with this book. I didn't know a lot about Hadrian prior to coming to this sort of biography. Hadrian is literally having these crossover events with Epictetus, who is one of the most famous Stoic philosophers. And obviously Hadrian is sort of setting the stage for Marcus Aurelius, who's going to be coming shortly after him. And Hadrian himself is interested in sort of like the Greco philosophical world, uh, spending time in Athens and uh, runs across Arian, who would go on to write the Anabasis, like oh, just so many cool crossovers happening. Hadrian's also becoming the emperor at the end of sort of the first apostolic generation. So like the persecutions of the Christians by Nero has already happened, but there's like this next wave that's sort of bubbling up. And it's a really interesting way to see the world of like different religions and philosophies now coming, coming to life um, in Hadrian's lifetime. I think it's a great book just for that, just to see how these competing philosophies um, we're all actually shaping the undercurrents of this empire and, and the world as we know it today. All right, the second book that I just finished reading uh, is Orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton. Um, Chesterton, interestingly enough, wrote this before he became a Christian, or I think before he became Catholic. I, I don't know exactly what the timeline was, but it's before he goes kind of into full um, religious life and he's trying to figure out what he believes in. Two quotes from this book on Orthodoxy, one that's near and dear to my heart as someone who's been studying the Spanish mystics for almost a decade now. Chesterton says this, mysticism keeps men sane. As long as you have mystery, you have health. When you destroy mystery, you create morbidity. Such a good quote. And if you're all in on stoicism, you may you may not like this. I know it's mm, it, this is a saucy take on Marcus Aurelius, but Chesterton had this view. Chesterton was just like a, a fun dude, like a really fun philosopher, theologian, whatever you want to call him. But he has this line in Orthodoxy about Marcus Aurelius. He says, Marcus Aurelius is the most intolerable of human types. He is an unselfish egoist. An unselfish egoist is a man who has pride without the excuse of passion. Highly recommend reading, even if you're deep in stoicism. I There was a time in my life where I was like, stoicism is awesome. I still, I think, use a lot of those principles today, but I think it needs to, there needs to be more. Stoicism, I don't think is like a, an entire structure. I think it's maybe a pillar. And Chesterton's take on the Stoics, on Marcus Aurelius. It's good. All right, read number three. Book number three is um, Walden by Henry David Thoreau. I like to reread sections from this book every single year. This year, I just reread the whole front-loaded, massive chapter economy and the practicality that Thoreau brought to transcendentalism and sort of like the, the groundedness and just being like, this is how much it costs for me to live out my philosophy. I think returning to that now, several years later, helps me see like, yeah, I need to look at the practicality of the things that I want to implement. Like it's not enough to just have good ideas. Like you want to go out there and do them. Be excited about the practical things. Be excited about sort of the the accounting and sort of like the mundane labor sometimes of implementing your philosophy. And for me, Thoreau is just one of those reads that <clears throat> every time I get in there, it's it's good. It's a good read. Finally, book number four is a book that I just started reading and it is called Hunting Trips of a Ranch Man. It's by Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, the edition I have, the edition I have, which is this one, uh, I'll link all these books down below so you can pick them up. Uh, this has a forward by Stephen Ambrose, who is the author of Band of Brothers, along with several other just great books about history. If you haven't read Ambrose, if you haven't seen Band of Brothers, the TV series that HBO did, definitely go check that out. But what's interesting about Theodore Roosevelt for me is his sort of philosophy as this like hunter wilderness man and his progression into someone who uh, became this conservation advocate, really like a strong conservation advocate, especially today, I think, when conservatism seems to be at odds with uh, like, uh, I don't wanna say saving the planet, but like caring for the planet, maybe is a better way to, to look at it. Theodore Roosevelt pulled these things together really well, I think, going back to some of his ideas, watching his story unfold, from kind of just like dude that's just out running around in the wilderness hunting things uh, at whim to uh, someone who evolves as this naturalist and learns to love learns to love uh, nature and um, all the things that can be found and discovered in nature if we take care of 
the natural world. To subdue it, I believe, is what a good book once said. So there we go, four reads. If you want a little narrative to your philosophy, leave a comment down below with a good narrative philosophy book, whether that's like a biography or just something with some progression around an individual's philosophy or like a, a look at a time where philosophy was burgeoning, the enlightenment, renaissance age. Um, I love reading that stuff. I love reading that stuff, I think, more than reading just like raw philosophy books. I wanna see humans like applying it. I wanna see how philosophy evolves over someone's life. Um, I think that's what's cool about these four picks. And if you'd like me to make another one of these videos, uh, let me know down in the comments below. With that, to everyone who has subscribed to this channel, thank you so much. And if you haven't yet, just go click the button, hit the subscribe button. It's easy, it's fast, it's free, and uh, you'll get to see more of me. Be kind both in life and in the comments below, and like this video to send good vibes across the internet. Do it again soon. Later.